Welcome to this video lesson on Pincasso. Pincasso is a tool which is going to scan your entire environment and then create a report with all the findings that it has on misconfigurations or certain hardening recommendations that the tool can provide. The report that the tool generates is it consists of two different parts. The first part uh, showcases on a high level uh, the risk level towards the domain or your environment, and the second level is the different technical uh, detections and recommendations that the tool comes up with. So when the when Pincaster scans your environment, it will extract information about computers and users, and then provide information about, uh, for example, when was uh, passwords not, or rather, when if there were any administrators that the password has not been changed in the past three years or if there's any stale objects like computer accounts that haven't logged in, in the past 10 years, but they're still active and enabled, like general things for management active, managing Active Directory. It will also look into some common issues, such as the one that we discussed previously, specifically the group uh, policy preferences passwords. It will check whether SMB version one or the Spooler service is running on domain controls. It's going to report on all of these uh, small things. It will also look into uh, access control list misconfigurations. For example, if domain users or authenticated users, the everyone group, if they have been given any rights, for example, if they have any rights towards uh, changing a GPO or changing a file that a GPO is deploying to all workstations and so on. It will check, for example, if uh, LAPS is installed and the amount of checks is really massive for us to cover in this presentation. The best uh, way to really understand the tool is by executing it and then looking into uh, all the different things that it detects. And that is the best way because it's constantly being improved. The developers are releasing new versions rather often. And so what we can't co cover in here or what we're not going to showcase is most likely not in the tool yet, but it might come in the future. But then again, the current list is really massive. And let's take an example here. Um, if you remember in the high overview report, which I was showing earlier here, uh, the different, the, the four different categorizations, still objects, trusts, privileged accounts, and anomalies. So just to take some of them, I wanted to showcase the different findings that the tool has for each of the different categorizations. For example, for the privileged accounts, uh, it detects that there's uh, 19 accounts with unconstrained delegations configured in our domain. There's also uh, a constrained delegation configured towards a domain controller. And this risk I outlined earlier in Kerberos delegation, where an account with delegation to domain control can basically impersonate anyone else in the entire, in the entire domain. That could be really bad. And then this tool will go and detect if this exists in our environment or not. It will also check if... Um, the flag, uh, this account is sensitive and can be, cannot be delegated, is set to our um, privileged accounts. It's also looking if any service accounts or any accounts that have an SPN set are also privileged. And that is also the case in here, where it says at least one member of an administrative group could potentially be vulnerable to the Kerberos attack. And so on. The list continues. It's really hundreds and hundreds of things that the tool can detect. For anomalies, it will look into when was uh, the last time that the Kerberos password or Kerbit TGT's password was changed. This is a topic which have not which we have not discussed yet in the course, but we'll come back into it later on. It also shows that it discovered two passwords in uh, GPOs, and this is exactly the group uh, group policy preferences passwords that we had discussed previously. There were two passwords that were stored in there, which the two discovered. Um, it will also see that the Spooler service is running on uh, four of our domain controllers, and that's a good, good thing to really uh, outline because that's one of the services which we really want to disable on domain controllers. And the reason for that is because it can really, really easily be abused with unconstrained delegation, which is exactly what we did earlier when we were discussing Kerberos delegation. And then I also wanted to look at the stale objects rules. Here it's going to detect whether you have presence of systems that are, that are no longer supported by their vendors. And what we're going to see in here is examples of uh, Windows 2000, Windows 2003 servers, Windows XP. It detects that there are 
users in our Active Directory whose primary group is not domain users. That's also something that's going to detect on. This is something that we also want to know about because if we had certain GPOs that we want to apply uh, startup scripts or something on domain users, unless these users were manually added to domain users afterwards, the GPO will just not apply on them because their normal group is not domain users. So that's something to be aware of. And again, the tool will check it up uh, as well. The last finding in here that I want to discuss was the, the last one, which is non-admin users that can add up to 10, that can add up to two computers in the domain. The default in every domain is that every user can add up to 10 computers to the domain. And that is really against best practice because you shouldn't let users domain join machines. Rather, it should only be those specific accounts that require this privilege. So domain administrators uh, and one or two accounts that are associated with SCCM or other tools that you might have for domain joining uh, new devices. The finding here was that every user could domain join two computers. And while it's not the default 10, it's still bad. It shouldn't be there. Um, let's go into the environment and I want to just showcase how to execute Pink Castle. One thing to be aware of is that Pink Castle is not a free tool. There is a free version for experimenting with getting used to the tool, but if you want to use it in an enterprise environment, you have, the, you have to pay the license for that tool. Let's move to the environment and do a quick execution just to see how easy it is to get the data out. I just connected to the environment and I already downloaded the uh, Pink Castle tool. I will go forward and extract this zip file. When extracted, let's navigate inside the folder. In here, other than the executable file, we'll discover a few other files which can tell us how to use the tool itself. We're going to omit them, omit them at this point and just focus on the executable file. We're going to run the executable file from a PowerShell prompt. So I'll start PowerShell and then type the executable name, which is pinkcastle.exe. There you go. Now, when you run the tool, it will ask you to choose an option of which to proceed. Option number one is health check score. And then you have different uh, checks that you can perform if you want to go more granular. For this specific test, we'll just go with option one and simply press enter to proceed forward with it. Now, we get prompted to specify the domain name that we want to investigate and it detects the current one that the user is currently logged into. In this case, that is ELS Bank. And this is the domain that you want to scan. So we, we're going to just go forward and press enter again. Now, data gathering has started and depending on how big your environment is, this tool might take a couple of minutes to execute. As what you're going to see in here in a small environment like mine, it will just take a couple of seconds and we'll have all the data collected and re ready to be displayed back to us. It's gathering data about uh, many different artifacts in Active Directory and then assembles the final report uh, with all of them being present. And what we're seeing on the screen now is that the actual final report is already done and we can see it uh, in the same folder as the executable and the new name is an HTML document. In this case, it is called ADHS, the domain name, .html. So let's go forward and open this HTML file. Immediately we get presented with the nice report of all the different indicators of uh, risk levels in our environment, or the, the four different ones that we discussed already in the slides. It tells us that the overall domain risk for our domain is 80 out of 100. And then it shows us the different uh, four categories which it assembled data for. You will see that the overall domain risk level will always be the same as the highest one that it has detected in these four areas. And in this case, it is 80 out of 100 because that is the score under the privileged accounts. So if we go further down, we can see the actual findings that this tool has detected. So under stale objects, we'll see that we have 
Non-admin users can add up to 10 computers to the domain. Another interesting one is number of accounts which do not require Kerberos authentication is one. You can actually press on these to get a very detailed descriptive uh, information about defining itself, uh, some technical explanation behind it, and a potential potential solution that the developers of these two have, have advised. But what is also more important in here is that it will also show us immediately the account which was found to be vulnerable to this specific finding. Now, if we go further down in published accounts, we'll see that uh, it gives us uh, an estimate that everyone can take control of a key domain object by abusing targeted permissions. This finding, if we, if we look further into it, is essentially telling us that every domain object, user or computer, will has currently has the ability to hijack a published domain identity. It could be, for example, there's a path for escalation to domain administrators. The next one is telling us that there is a GPO item that can be modified by any user. If we expand this, we'll see the information for this specific GPO. It will tell us that there is a GPO which is Labs Deploy and authenticated users in the domain have full control over this GPO. And this is really bad. This is one of those findings which we really have to rush and go fix immediately because if this GPO is linked to a device where an, a, a published user is uh, logging in or accessing, that could really end up being a uh, full domain compromise for us and of course something that we want to avoid. Scrolling further down, we'll see other uh, information about the domain. Some of them are really informative like unconstrained delegations are configured on one domain account. It, I mean, unconstrained delegation is one of those flows which we discussed, and it's really bad, but in many cases, it's required to be used. So the tool will just flag, is the flag, flag to us that there's an account which has this configured. So it's up to us at this point to decide, does this account actually need these permissions or not? Because if it doesn't, we need to do a cleanup and simply remove uh, these permissions. There's also some trusts which were identified in the domain and some anomalies. What we're going to see here and probably interesting for you, which we already discussed, is that the spooler service is running on domain controllers and password policies for service accounts have not been found. And the tool recommends that these password policies would be at least 20 characters, but our recommendation was 100 or more. Scrolling further down the report, we'll get a very detailed information about users, about groups, uh, how many of them are active, how many of them are disabled, locked, and, you know, very rich, detailed information about our entire domain. In here, for example, we can see an overview of how many users are members of the previous groups, how many of them are enabled, how many are disabled, inactive, and so on. You know, it, it could be really, really valuable, this information. Then we have all delegations. It will show us delegations on organizational units. So in here, we can see that the account Roni has full control over admin as the holder. And this is, again, one of those really bad uh, configurations because what this means is that Roni will not only have ability to modify the OU code admin as the holder, but having ability over this specific object also gives you the same ability over previous groups. So because Roni is set to modify admin as the holder, he is going to inherit that he can also go and modify the group, for, for example, domain admins. And that's absolutely crazy. Then scrolling further down, we'll just continuously get the rich uh, information that this tool gives back to us about the rest of the domain. I'll scroll all the way down and I'll show you what they really like uh, in here as well, is that it will give us an overview of all the files that GPOs are deploying. In this case, there's only one file which a GPO is deploying. And what is interesting is that it just happens to be the same GPO that we discovered every um, authenticated users can go and modify.